How's it going everyone and welcome to No Fun Allowed and today I want to talk about the jobs that we have when we sit down at the table to play games. Now when I look at this list here, I've drafted this from a role playing game system that I reviewed recently, Land of Eam, but I've modified it so it can fit any system really. I will be using this for every campaign here on out, I'll be showing it to the players and I'll be reminding myself of this because job does sound tedious, job probably isn't the best word for it. But at the end of the day, we are sitting down and playing with a group of people and there needs to be some clear goals in mind. And with that, of course, there will be some jobs that we have to do. And of course, of course, GMs are not the only people showing up to the table with a job. I see this a lot. I see a lot of people think that the burden to bear for all of the work is on the GM, but that is not the case. It should not be the case there should be an equal amount of work put into a campaign, not just the GM. So let's kick this off here. We have the player's jobs. Role play or role play your character. Either build your characters with the idea in mind or roll up their traits. Show up to the table and decide right then and there. Are you going to create this live background and are you gonna create this intricate character or are you gonna simply roll up the traits and roll with the punches? What are you going to do? Whichever one you decide upon, make sure that you run with it and make that character both fun and believable. Make people want to play with that character. And far, far more importantly, make people not want to run away from this character. Make people want to actually explore this character's depths. Make people want to adventure with this character. Demonstrate the good qualities and bad qualities of your character. We are not these infallible, awesome people we have some downsides to us don't we so play up the awesome parts the play of the parts that you think your character does well at but also show off that they are imperfect show off the fact that yeah they might be this cool person in combat but maybe out of combat they do something a little bit weird but once again make sure that it doesn't impede on the fun for the rest of the party and very very importantly give them a personal quest or reason to join in on the adventure do not make a character that has an elaborate background and then they are just sitting around and need to be pushed and prodded into adventure no you're playing a adventuring game to adventure don't make a character that doesn't adventure i've mentioned this before about harry potter players that can be fine a little bit, but there is a clear difference between reluctant and over-reluctant characters, and nobody wants over-reluctant characters. The second part here is explore the world. What do you want to do? Where do you want to go? Show up to the table with a sense of exploration. You are inhabiting this crazy world, whether that be a fantasy, high fantasy, low fantasy, a sci-fi, a cyberpunk, a, you know, whatever it is. You are inhabiting this world and there's so much to find, go and find it. Your GM has made you this world, if they've supplied with you a map, you should explore that map because that's what they expect of you and that's what you should be expecting of the game. Look at the maps and rumors you have been given and explore the confines of that world. So what that is, is the GM provides you this map and they provide you with these rumors, these little hooks, follow those hooks, explore that land. But at the same time, do not go outside of those bounds. If they give you a map, don't say, let's go over there, past the map, haha, -ha, because, you know, that's just not fun for the GM. The GM prepared a certain thing, and if you just go and step on their toes, then that's just not going to be a fun time for anybody involved. And if they're giving you rumors, that means there's at least something tied behind it. So explore those, even if it's just for a little bit. Whether it be a sandbox, railroad, or roller coaster style game, stick to what you have agreed upon to play. If you have shown up to the table and you agreed to play in a railroaded adventure where it's got a start, middle, and end, and the GM is going to be guiding you along this adventure, do not go off the rails. If you are given a sandbox adventure and you've got this big old world to explore, but then you don't want to explore it, then that's just not going to be part of what the GM was expecting, and the game is going to come to a grinding halt. Play whatever game that you all agree upon to play and be cooperative. Share the spotlight with other players. There is no I here. This is a team game. Everyone showing up to the table. Make sure that everyone gets their chances to shine because presumably everyone wants their chances to shine. There might be some people who decide, yeah, I don't really care about getting the spotlight and that's fine. 
but I'm willing to bet more often than not everybody wants to have that awesome moment throughout their adventures. Help each other and avoid antagonistic play. What's better, four people working together to overcome the odds or four people at each other's throats and bring each other down? I promise you that if you get into antagonistic style play where everyone's cutting each other's ankles and if everybody's stealing gold from each other, that's just not going to be a fun experience. Why would you want to show back up to the table time and time again if you're constantly getting berated and beaten by the people that should be your friends? And assist the GM with anything they may need help with. Nobody is perfect. Of course, your GM should have done some preparation and have some notes there, but they are not perfect. They're not going to remember the NPC's name off the top of their head. They're not going to remember the voice. They're not going to have that situation all prepared. Make sure that no matter the instance, you try and help them in any regard. It's not world breaking if you have to say, oh yeah, that character definitely did that one thing five sessions ago. Just make sure that everyone is on the same board. The GM's trying to run their game, and of course they've got so many things going on, of course they're going to forget some things here and there. So hopefully you are able to pick up wherever they leave off. So that's just the player side of things. Let's take a look at the GM's jobs. Make your world feel real. Make the NPCs believable and memorable. Of course, your characters are going to interact with a nameless NPC when they ask a question of, oh, hey, what's going on in town? That's fine. But the NPCs that they're actually going to regularly hang out with, the bartender and the town crier and whoever else that they come across, you want those characters to have believable motivations and you want them to be memorable. Whether that be their name, their face, their voice, their quirk, their motivations, whatever it is, you want those things to be memorable for your players. So that later down the line, they'll always say, oh, hey, Boblin the Goblin, he wants to become a chef in town. So what are we going to do to help out Boblin the Goblin? Populate a play area with enough NPCs and quests to provide a fun experience. If you make a whole awesome sandbox style island that your players are ready to explore, but then you forget to add any sort of quest or forget to add any NPCs there, then there's just going to be a blank space and I think a lot of people are going to lose interest real quickly. There is some people that do like exploring the unknown with no motivation at all, but I think a lot of people also like some motivation. Instead of it just being a blank empty island say, hey, we heard that there's a mine that was uh, overtaken oh so long ago. Oh hey, over there in the forest there is apparently some spiders and the spiders captured someone that really rich the other day. Oh, there's an NPC in town that is actually looking for adventurers just like you. Provide these things, and that is going to make your world feel a bit more lived in. Tie the PCs into the world either through knowledge or through unique opportunities. That can come in the form of these long, amazing, elaborate quests that tie into the characters' backgrounds, or it could be the fact that as your players are marching along, you say, hey, your character would know this about this forest, or your character would know this thing about this one graveyard, etc., etc., your characters populate this world and they've presumably been living it for quite some time. So they should have a huge amount of knowledge. Give them that knowledge. Don't hide everything behind roles. Just give them some things that they should presumably already have. And the plots and plans of the NPCs help shape the world just as much, if not more, than the PCs. Of course, the spotlight is always on the PCs unless you're willing to have some cutscenes that take place somewhere else. But the PCs are just a small band of adventurers or whatever type of game that you're running. The NPCs are far, far more numerous and far more influential. The kings are moving about their kingdoms. The emperors are trying to take over land. That evil, crazy dragon is now trying to destroy the local population. The NPCs should be regularly interacting with the world and your players should be seeing those changes over time. They are, of course, changing whatever they come across for the better or for the worse, but they should be hearing about, oh, hey, because you guys failed to stop all of those evil bugbears, now those bugbears have taken over this local town. What do you wish to do? Give the PCs interesting and difficult choices. Make them weigh their options. If you give them several options, but there's just one always clear better option, they're always going to take it. So give them choices that force them to sit there and deliberate. Say, hey, if you go to the left, you are going to be going up against a spike pit trap, but you go to the right, you go up against saw blades. Simple things like that can go a long way. Ramp up the tension, then give them moments of respite. Give them awesome, cliffhangery, 
crazy daredevil style scenarios but then at the same time also give the moments where their characters are free to rest and relax those moments are going to showcase off what the characters are going to be really doing because some of them might prefer the more crazy combat weird scenarios and some might prefer the rest and respite back home push the game forward don't allow the game to grind to a halt we do not want our game to come to a halt we show up to the table presumably only once a week for only a few amount of hours do not allow anything to waste your time don't get hung up on rules don't get hung up on that one missing piece of information just keep moving forward you can always correct things later you can always look up rules later what we can't do later is get back the time that you lost from your session challenge the players but also be their biggest fans reward creativity the players are going to come up with solutions you never thought of if you create a crazy elaborate trap they're going to do anything and everything to try and overcome it and that might be something that you didn't think of whether that be they have some spell that they haven't used but they're going to use it now or they use that item in that weird way where they try to jam it into the slot or they try to throw it at a certain spot or whatever the case may be they're going to be creative reward it and don't punish them by saying oh no you can only do this thing one way speaking of allow for more than one solution to a problem if your players are in the dungeon and the door is locked with a key and the key can only be obtained by going to this one specific room and looking behind this one specific tile that's gonna suck allow for there to be numerous ways to open up that door whether that be them bashing it down them using a spell them climbing over it or through some grates or finding that secret tunnel or allow for so many different solutions because your players are not thinking on your same wavelength they are going to be approaching problems so many different ways allow for them to overcome the challenges in whatever way that they can try to see fit and also part of that is you don't have to say yes to everything but you don't have to say no either don't always say yes and don't always say no you can do yes ands you can do no ands you can do maybes give me a roll you can definitely spread out the degrees of what you allow and don't allow and as long as you keep this steady as long as you're always saying yes that could potentially work or no this will never work as long as you keep it consistent the players are going to understand and because they signed up to play in your game they will be on the same wavelength as you i wanted to show this off because once again i think a lot of people think that the gm is the one that has to do everything and the players can just do whatever i don't think that's the case at all players need to be showing up with the same expectations and everyone needs to be on the same page here and speaking of that page i'm going to be showing this off to everybody everybody that i play with because a lot of people show up to our games with different expectations i know every single dm has had this where you have five players in the party four of them are on the same wavelength and then you got that one person who thought oh i thought the game was going to be like this or that there's always going to be these conflicting ideas and laying them out right here and talking about them whether that be in that session zero or just talking about this in between sessions or whatever talking about what we expect from each other is going to make our games better in the long run i promise you i'm gonna have a link with this down below if you want to show it off to your players but i strongly recommend that you maybe make your own maybe you add some more things maybe you subtract some things maybe you change things up a bit here because you don't run certain types of games or maybe you always are amenable to saying yes ands or whatever the case may be go ahead and change it up yourself and show it off to your players because once again putting this down on the table is going to keep everyone on the same page and it's going to be a great experience so go ahead and tell me are you going to show this off to your players or are you just going to be more verbal about this and say whatever it is that you want out of the game if you do show this off to your players are you going to change anything about it or are you going to keep it as is and do you think that the gms have more of a job than the players go ahead and tell me those things because i would love to hear it but that's going to do it for me Thank you for watching, thanks for listening, and thank you to my amazing patrons. You guys are absolutely incredible. Thank you so very much, and I cannot wait to see you all in the next one.